Hello drone racers. A number of people have asked me, can you use the EV100 goggles with a simulator? And it turns out you can, you just have to figure out the right equipment. It took me a couple of tries, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to get it all hooked up. So hopefully you can practice and become a better pilot than I am here in this video. I've just gotten the loss of drone. I'm getting it figured out, but you get a much more immersive experience with a set of goggles than you do just looking at the screen. So hopefully this will help somebody out who wants to do that. To start with, this is for the EV100 goggles. This might work with other goggles if they have similar types of inputs. And I'm gonna say, I know some people have had problems, but mine work really well. So I've been flying for a while on these now. So I'm gonna start with the goggles and work my way out. First, you need a battery, so this will have to be charged, but if you're on the simulator you can always plug in to the battery or the goggles while you are flying so it's just one more cord to have to handle but you can do it so you don't have to worry about keeping a full battery even though this battery has lasted about two hours for me most of the time so on one side we have a headphone jack and i actually have been flying with a headphone connection in because these are using an hdmi connection in from the computer and it passes the audio into the goggles and i can wear the headset and hear the audio from the quadcopter in Velocidrone. That works really well. So there's one cord. On the other side, we have power, and then we have a three and a half millimeter phono jack. So the problem with this is it's been tricky to figure out the right one. This is the one I used, and this is from an Apple iPod. And this is the type of connector that you want. The problem is there's about four different ways that this can be pinned out. It's a question of which of these metal pins goes to which color here. I will link over here so you can see which one is the right one. But this is a cable for an iPod or a Zune because those still exist, at least the cables do. What this is not is a camcorder cable. The first cable I got was this one and it doesn't work. And you'll see it looks exactly the same, but the pinout is different. Some people may have gotten this to work by swapping the yellow and the red, so the video and one of the channels because these are backwards, but I found the ground on this one was wrong. And it would work if I didn't plug the cable in all the way, but then the audio would sometimes work in one ear and it was really a pain. Just get the right cable. So I'll link below the right cable that I got for this because then I'm able to plug it in. I have stereo audio and it works perfectly. So that's one of the biggest tricks to get this to work is get the right cable. What this plugs into is an HDMI to RCA adapter. So these cables plug in here and it's very important to make sure you order the right one. I bought this one on Amazon for $12, but this is an HDMI to RCA. These are monodirectional. So this is only going input from HDMI to output RCA. You can buy them the, or the other way around. And if you want to output from your goggles, to a TV, you would need one the other way around. There are some more expensive ones that are selectable, but this one was only $12 and those are significantly more. This is powered via USB. It comes with a cable, with a mini cable for some reason, and it is switchable for PAL or NTSC. And one of the nice things about these goggles is it does switch back and forth very easily. You just flip the switch and you can see it in the goggles. It just switches, which is one of the things I hated about the VRD2 Pros. They didn't do that. So then I just have a standard HDMI cable. On mine, I have to have a adapter to make this work because this is a display port in my laptop to connect to. So I go from HDMI to display port and then this plugs into my laptop. What you have to do then is plug in the power, plug in the three and a half millimeter jack all the way as long as you have the right cable. And then what you'll see is static here. There you go. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the top button three times or until it beeps three times. It'll switch the inputs and it'll be bad there. And then there we go. There it's focusing and there is Velocidrone. And you can see even through the, my camera with this is a terrible setup, it looks pretty good. So one of the things that you'll have is it doesn't, it might be if you make it full screen, it doesn't quite fit and the sizing will be off. What I did is I just drag the corners of the window until it fits perfectly in my vision and then i'm able to go and fly from there but the, also the audio passes through and everything just works really well so i'm able to fly one thing i did find is i was really glad that i have the 
fan switch because my face was getting hot very quickly. So I was able to turn on the fan and that turned on and uh, helped things a lot. I noticed that I was able to uh, keep flying where I thought I was probably gonna have to take them off. So there you go. You have to make sure you have the right HDMI adapter. You have to, have to make sure you have the right cable, but these are totally viable for using for a simulator. And it looked good enough for me. I'm a terrible, terrible Velocidrone flyer. I, I don't know what the deal is. I was much better at FPV Freerider, but I probably just need to spend some time on it. But that's besides the point. Lots of people do like it. And I this is the first time I've ever used it with goggles and it did feel even though the screen is small in these, much more immersive than it does looking at my laptop screen. So I would highly recommend this setup for these or other goggles if you have them. And by the way, I just tried this same setup in my EV800Ds and they do not work. So I'm gonna have to figure out what it takes to make that one work because the same thing just didn't work. Neither of the cables. So if you found this useful, leave a like down below and comment with your favorite simulator. I just got Velocidrone, haven't spent much time with it. Is it the best option? I got it because I thought it would be good for being able to play with other people online, but I'm a terrible pilot in it. So until next time, remember, it did work, but it took me a giant pile of cables to make it happen.